story time. Too long has it been a world of fears and a world of tears. It's now time for love to wipe that away. So welcome to the everlasting gospel the, um, of Revelation 14, foretold for these latter days to help bring forth a harvest of love. Night, night. Give those friends a good night kiss. Put them to bed now and pull on up. But this guy likes snoring. So uh, back up a little bit. Um, even historians, um, and watch my last video, even historians uh, throughout the world said, yep, it was totally night all over the world in the daytime, a part of the world. So, but it was like the sun disappeared according to eyewitness testimony that I've already given in the last, uh, even Pilate wrote of the same exact thing in his words. Uh, this is part of the restoration of, um, that Jesus said would come in Matthew 17, 11, to restore a better understanding about how things really, really were. Gospel truth, Adam had no belly button, <laughs> I think about it. So what did I do with my glasses? I always put my glasses whoop, right there. So love from love, hope from hope, and peace from our Prince of Peace who has sent forth the perfect preparation of his peace for the kingdom age if people can receive it. It is the kingdom age new covenant of Jeremiah 31 verses 33 to 35, the core of that but it was addressed to Israel and all mankind, and that is who the Lord has addressed it to. And it is to all mankind of his perfect love and his perfect harmony in action. But it was still a very ominous, uh, spooky. Um, so I'm going to reread uh, from the last video one, uh, one paragraph here. Even much of our Milky Way seemed to be mopped away as it spilled over into an unseen void, just as Amos had predicted when he said, During that day of doom, there would be a sunset at midday, and earth would be overshadowed in darkness under full light. And as the sky grew darker, many stars all of a sudden appeared to cast forth a strange and lurid red light, which swiftly caused a dusky kind of dawn to transform into a premature dusk, way out of sync with time's cycle, for that unheard nightfall would end up uh, lasting until our Lord passed into glory. And multitudes thereabouts all over Jerusalem and for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of miles from there. Uh, people all th thought it was normal for the, uh, no one thought that it was normal for day to become like the deepest part of the night. Not even, couldn't have been an eclipse because there was no outline at all of the sun. And for those witnessing Christ's devastation, uh, the thought of it just being a coincidental happening could not possibly stick around very long. As such, both men and beasts all over were being struck with utter terror, far too grievous to describe. But for uh, believers in Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus uh, of Nazareth, our uh, majesty of majesties, hero of heroes, an icon of icons, for he who is uh, the good shepherd over all the flocks of man, John 10, 15, 16. This is his one world faith of his love and action. Uh, he knew that uh, insofar as that none could ever shake the truth away from, from them, that God's eternal grace is immeasurable, his mercy inexhaustible, just as his love and peace always uh, remains most expressible, uh, inexpressible. It, it just transcends all that is imagined. Even the enemies of uh, Isa, Yeshua, Jesus, stopped reviling him while the Pharisees tried their best to give some kind of nonsensical reasons for what was taking place in the heavens. and But they quickly failed in their attempt and they were reduced to silence. Many others were also then seized with a terrible remorse for the crucifixion of our Messiah, and they struck their breasts while crying out, May his blood fall upon his murderers. Nor was it hard to see that there was a large number of many others, whether near the cross or at a distance, who fell down quickly onto their knees. Voices of desperation were arising, and in the midst of uh, newly lit torches flickering all over that epic scene, Jerusalem was aglow with lanterns. 
and several men were all of a sudden in the middle of the day, not even night, and were all of a sudden begging real hard for the forgiveness of Jesus. They figured, this is karma. <laughs> this is sowing and reaping. It's coming back to haunt us. Uh, and somehow Jesus managed to turn his eyes compassionately unto even those people. And even in the midst of his constantly increasing suffering, suffering, he had nothing but blessings to give for one and all. However, as that supernatural darkness climbed, many la lanterns, multitudes more, were quickly being lit all over the place. It was therefore a very frightful period when gross darkness first came into being of Isaiah 60, uh, but the spiritual form would cause much more damage. And then from out of the great empty spaces far beyond our blackest wor world, the blackest cloud of the, deplor the most deplorable essence of darkest evil was then zooming in real fast towards our Lord, who was soon to become sin for man. It was a bleak time of many, many mutterings, nor would that curse of dark shadows ever contain enough light that people could even see the dangerous roads of rebellion that they were treading upon. Neither could they ever possibly see the bottomless pitfalls ahead. As a result, the freaky words from Isaiah were quickly resounding again like muffles of insanity from someone who was really nuts to start off with. For that was suddenly the very sad time when our son became sore ashamed. Something weird was becoming thick. Even before people knew what was happening, everything was then unexpectedly spiraling on down to the terrible, shameful point where our Earth's best-kept living secret was rapidly being silenced. And all the while, many whispering winds of taboo kept, uh, kept trying to, uh, to bring messages about that forbidden event uh, to keep things quiet because ignorance has always been the, the Satan's best tool. God's people have always been destroyed for their lack of knowledge. And so uh, it came about all things pass that while all this was happening, in the very last uh, moments of our Lord being able to live with them, mortal flesh, uh, it was fast coming to a close, much quicker than a sundial's accuracy could linger as the surrounding light was swiftly being whipped away by clouds and some very angry angelic beings. Rebellion was manifesting, therefore, as a fog of hatred, nor was it too hard to figure out that the heart and the soul of our planet's rema remaining virtue, purity, and decency were suddenly being pushed down into the real thick mud of people's very worst disobedience people. And our diplomat of eternity was then fighting really hard for every breath that his collapsing lungs uh, would allow him to take. And he was working hard to do that. Nor was there much more than lots of uh, trouble left lingering in the air for him to breathe upon that hill of his heartless crucifixion. Thus our noblest nobleman of noblemen was seemingly fated to be suffocated by the sinlessness of hum uh, sinfulness of humanity. That's what was killing him. Our hatred, our anger, our lack of inhuman, our inhumane ways, our no humanity. And um, so it was predestined to conquer before his uh, resurrection. But the paradoxical moment of the nearing death of our strength within our weakness would also soon bring forth the sudden birth of the most abundant life for everyone of love, placing their trust within love, whom he is. That's his name, 1 John 4, 7, those who love are born of God and know God because he is love, capital L, his name is love. And praise the Lord that even in the middle of his very worst trial, our living sacred heart held more concern over others than he even had for himself. As such that God, godliness and bleeding flesh slowly looked down from his cross unto his only loyal uh, apostle, John, his beloved, that was next to his mother. But at that point, due to the climbing darkness, 
uh, and it was it was pretty well pitch black at this point. The frightened Roman soldiers allowed those two to come much close, closer, Mary and John, only being a few cubits away from the Lord's cross. Uh, but they had been forced in the back for some time. So then Yeshua Jesus declared to John, Behold your mother! And as our giver of many blessing gazed towards John and she, they had never seen such a sweet or look of utter adoration anywhere. And his eyes were all clouded up, not of tears, of, but tears of love. And nor could any mere words ever have any hope of describing his heart-melting look of utter benevolence that was igniting a sense of calm over his own. For Mary and John both imagined that exploding sparkles were steadily pouring out from Christ's awe-consuming eyes of some inward diminishing flames. But still they were flames of fire, passionate with love, passionate with hope, passionate with forgiveness for one and all and passionate for the day when all knowledge, all things could be restored. Matthew 17, 11. Behold, darkness had covered the earth and gross darkness the people uh, of no godly passionate love. And it would therefore come to pass in a few short years later that Roman historian Julius Africanus confirmed, and uh, if you want to Google him, Julius, you know how to spell, a-F-R-I-A-C-A-N-U-S. This is a real quote, uh, so look him up. Uh, Roman historian Julius Africanus confirmed that over the world there pressed a most fearful darkness so that even the stars even appeared, uh, no, no stars appeared in the sky. Those were his words over the whole wor world. So, you know, within the mouth of two or three witnesses, all truth, is established and uh, there was another uh, a researcher his name was Tertullian of the court of Caesar and he additionally stressed this the light departed from the sun the light was gone from the sun it was void blackness hung over the people but one thing was certain the darkness mantling the earth was not more dense than the surrounding, uh, uh, that, than that, that was surrounding the self-righteous minds of all those who had taken such great pleasure in seeing our Lord of love put down. And at his birth, his only star, uh, his own star, the star of Bethlehem, had known uh, Yeshua, Jesus, and had guided the wise men to his manger and our son additionally had known him, and at the sight of his dying anguish, it was forced to hide the face of light by God's command, whom Jesus was one with. And uh, praise the Lord. So with that, I'm going to pause you for uh, half a second. I'm going to put on a uh, pretty picture for you, and I'm going to go grab myself a coffee, because... Uh, Got to, got to, got to get it uh, lubricated. I like Starbucks. I'm a Starbucks guy, so I shall be right back. And um, know, beloved, that um, many of these visions came to me in dreams and inspiration, uh, in visions, and uh, a lot of research. I had a study to show myself approved for many, many years. Uh, the, the mountain of my work uh, is an iceberg underneath the tip of this small little iceberg. That's, it's only a thousand videos right now, but it's very, very small compared to the majority of all of my work that is still un, unseen and unknown. Uh, but one thing's for sure. Then the <clears throat> thick bleakness thereabouts began consuming everything bright of the spirit and due to that Jesus would become like a rainbow at night dreary dreary tidings were also uh, cheering like crazy while madness itself was doing a standing ovation as all of hell's demons thereabouts started to clap even the joy filled rhythm of the host's fast beating hearts were sadly slowing way down with some real great 
uh, suspense coming forth uh, front and center. Time was oppressiveness. It was time for oppressiveness to rule the earth in that hour. Thus good was finally taking the lonely back seat as evil drove wildly ahead like some uh, chariots armed with the sharpest type of revolving blades mounted on their wheels. Nor would the spiritual qualities of the uphill uh, uh, rising of righteousness of our uh, dying God with us ever think uh, about moving out of the way. It would never. So therefore there was a supernatural collision that was complete, completely unavoidable. Forces of good and bad, the force <laughs> is a force against force, and uh, not by power nor by might, but by the spirit of love, has all things of iniquity been destroyed. Now, the spirit of hate was plowing real hard into love as the presence of murderous outrage was trying its best to run right over redemption. Even the most lustful kind of hatred was trying its best to roll over our Lord's very best saving graces, beloved. And what a time it was. And it was most uh, ominous and spooky on that uh, scene. And But praise the Lord. God was in control, and he knew the end from the uh, beginning. And uh, so that supernatural uh, collision was, was right, right there. So it was therefore a real lip-biting moment indeed. So all things corrupt were suddenly speeding up much, much faster than they ever had rotted away before. Nor were there any uh, road bumps anywhere around that cursed hill a man's disgrace to slow anything back down. So it came to pass that the fast nearing blackened force of the most evil kind of wretched evil uh, was suddenly the only real driving force left upon our wishy-washy planet of some pretty double-minded souls. But that especially held true for that uh, ominous place of the skull. For the spirit of goodness was already bracing to take the hardest kind of hit that he could ever take. But Jesus was not sore afraid, beloved, for he had already declared, I lay down my life that I may take it up again. No man takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have the power to lay it down, and I have the power to take it up again. Thus saith the Lord God Almighty. And even the uh, extremely shocking words from the book of Job were then foreshadowing that forthcoming torturous experience of our future avenger of martyrs when it stated that my face is red with weeping, deep shadows ring my eyes. Additionally, our Lamb of God's fast-fading state wasn't being slowed down by his blood pressure increasingly dropping down really low, not high blood pressure, low, due to his heavy uh, loss of fluids, for life has always been in the blood. And uh, so it was quite the, uh, quite the time. And, but the Lord knew that his life force was predestined to be shed so that man could be pardoned by Father God unconditionally. And uh, God, that's always been God's love, unconditional, beloved. For it was written in Leviticus that without the shedding of blood, there could be no forgiveness. And that is why Christ was slain, slain before the foundation of the earth. And in his kingdom age covenant, he has always said to mankind over one and all, he says, I will be your God. You will be my people. I will forgive all your iniquity and I shall never remember it. Thus saith God, except for the unforgivable sin where we let our love light go out. But back in that real darkened place of the skull, uh, since Christ's passing was just but a moment away, he prayed silently unto El Shaddai, saying, O Adonai, 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 once I complete the task of man's redemption on this tree. And these were words that he was not actually saying in his mind. He was saying, I desire that the same cross shall be the tribunal of our justice and our endless mercy. Nailed to it, I desire to judge all those for whom I give my life by love, love, judging love. And having justified my cause of love, 
I wish to dispense the everlasting treasures of my love's coming into the world. So uh, then he said, For my passion and death over love for all shall be received by the just of love, and the reprobate uh, according to how each one merits his own works of love or hatred. I've sought to gain uh, all mortals, and I invited them to partake of our friendship within love and grace as one. From the first moment of my incarceration, I've always labored for them. I've borne fatigues, insults, uh, uh, reproaches, scourges. I've borne a crown of thorns, and now I am willingly suffering the bitter death of the cross, my beloved. And he said, I, dear Father, I implored my, uh, your vast kindness uh, upon them, even because uh, they did not know what they did. Ignorant were they. And I've watched in prayer, I've fasted, and I've wandered about teaching them the way of eternal life and eternal love, all given without any repentance. And I've sought to uh, secure everlasting happiness for everyone, just as I have merited it for all, without excluding anyone, as long as they don't let their love light go out. Those are my words. So by the spirit of prophecy, the Lord says, Therefore I have established and I have built up the law of grace, and I have firmly and uh, forever established the church in uh, Jeremiah 31, 33 to 35. For he says, I have said to everyone, I will be your God. You will be my people. I will forgive all your iniquity and I will never remember it. I will write my law and my love upon your heart. And beyond that, no one shall ever need to be taught of me anymore. For beyond that, uh, uh, there will be no sense because my unconditional love is now revealed. So uh, praise the Lord, the, the Lord spirit of uh, prophecy, the revelation of Christ Jesus' love was there in those fi final moments, even though they were hyper ones, but uh, still within where he was, peace w was within him, and he became serene. It's been said that in the last fleeting moments before anyone's heart suddenly stops, a review of uh, such a one's life races on by. But in the Lord's case, his prayers to Yahweh were much more vibrant uh, within the spirit realm. Then uh, it was much more vibrant than uh, panoramic scene, scenes could ever be to the eyes of men beholding such. For with some of his very last thoughts, Jesus then uh, said unto his Father through his heart, he said, From the multitudes of men in the fullness of my goodwill I shall call, select, separate all the just of love and all the predestined who will not let their love light go out. And through my grace they will save themselves by imitating me and my love and by doing my will of love and by obeying my my holy law of love that God alone, you, O beloved Father, could write. And I shall appoint all obedient followers to thrive as inheritors of my puzzles, my blessings, and my sacramental treasures, which shall open eyes of love to the mysteries concealed within the, my holy scriptures. But I will also enable sincere, fervent souls to walk in my humility and the meekness of my heart, while teaching them about the vast, uh, everlasting virtues of faith, hope, and uh, charity of prudence. Nor shall I uh, not emphasize the importance of my own justice, fortitude, and so sobriety, uh, being mimicked by them as much as possible so that we would try being like the master beloved and in a short come to uh, in a short time to come the lord stressed that devout men of learning would celebrate my divine gifts and favors which i have long ago allowed to come forth as a gushing river which will be sweeping away uh, satanic labors from out of the hearts of my faithful few as their contempt poverty and nakedness are now washed away as it shall be in the days of the latter-day mountain of Isaiah 25 at this channel where God shall remove all the shame and the disgrace off all the people of the world, whoever enters herein. 
And the Lord's prayers were then going mighty deep, people. And it was it was a time. And I'm just gonna turn this around and say goodbye here. Time is uh, this time just races by just too fast. But uh, I like all these pretty pictures on uh, YouTube, and I like having Elmo around and uh, Mickey and Minnie. They is my good friends. So make sure that you get yourself some good friends. Give them some tight hugs, kisses, because we all need to be as little uh, children. And that's what uh, was written. And that's what Jesus always said. Because all children have had their love lights on. And that's what Born Again has always been about. If you let your love go out because of bitterness, unforgiveness, you have to let it come on again. Or else we would perish if we don't have that light of love lighting our way like Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer uh, lighting his way. So know, beloved, as I wind this up, that uh, the Lord said, this shall, all the above, shall not only be their portion, but their inheritance as well. And by the way, now the kingdom age covenant has been given openly, so all people may inherit it now. The alcoholic, exactly where they're at, the homosexual, wherever they're at, everybody of love. And uh, Paul said at one point, uh, no one uh, in the flesh can inherit uh, the kingdom of God. No, nope, not, not until now. Not until the kingdom age new covenant of Jeremiah 31 has been given correctly to Israel and all mankind. So watch some of my first uh, 850 videos uh, to find out more about that. It's in uh, many of the videos. But one thing's for sure, uh, uh, the Lord said, for people must choose uh, the way of truth, the way of love, in order for these, to, in order to labor profitably. Otherwise, they're going to not be laboring profitably at all. So I shall uh, assign, therefore, to his children the trials I have chosen for myself in this life, some hardships that we would go through the same things as a pledge of friendship so that they may undergo these things with joy. So he said, O oh, Father of lights, I offer them my protection and my defense, my holy inspirations, and I offer them my favors and powerful assistance, and I offer them also my blessings and my justification according to each one's disposition and to the degree of their love. And, str and Christ stressed, and I promise to be a, a father, a brother, and a friend to all of them as he arises as the good shepherd over all the flocks of man. John 10, 15, 16, that is, this is his faith. And um, he said that we would be his chosen and beloved children, and he would be our everlasting father. So Emmanuel's passion was coming forth, and as such I appointed them as the inheritors of all my merits and treasures without any limitations. Uh, and he said, For I desire that all who dispose themselves shall partake of the goods of my holy church of love and the sacraments, that, that they would take that. And if they would lose my friendship, they would be able to restore themselves and recover my graces and blessings through my cleansing blood. So, O Father of the light of my lights, let now my elect be defended by our angels, who shall guide them, protect them, and bear them up uh, in, in their hands, lest they fall and lest they uh, shall, shall help them to arise. Likewise, the, the Lord said to his Father, It's my will that my just and chosen ones shall stand high above the reprobate and the demons, that they shall be feared and obeyed by my enemies, and that all the rational and irrational creatures shall serve mankind, that we would uh, take subjection, and uh, that uh, the influences of the heavens and the planets and the stars would show favor towards us and help give us life. And that was his prayer. And then he said, Then shall the earth, its elements, and animals sustain us. For all creatures that are mine and serve me shall also be theirs, us, ours. And they shall serve them as my children and my friends. And their blessing shall be in the dew of heaven and in the fruits of the earth. What blessing the Lord was speaking over us. 
more than ever, the Lord said, I now wish to hold them with my delights and as I communicate to them my secrets of the kingdom age herein and converse with them and live within them, says the Lord, for this kingdom age hour, uh, the covenant hour of Malachi 3, 1. Accordingly, the Lord said, I will make them partakers and heirs of the kingdom in order uh, in the kingdom of love that they can enjoy it with me in heaven by perpetual right in the unfailing beatitude. And I therefore consent that the reprobate shall be permitted to possess as their inheritance the desire of their flesh and their eyes and pride and all of its, uh, if people are reprobate, they will have perishing of the unforgivable sin of blasphemy of love and their light would go out. Nor would they fail to eat and be satisfied with the dust of earth, uh, namely riches and with famines and the corruption of the flesh and its delights, with the vanity and presumption of the world, they would perish. For such possessions have spiritually dead men labored and applied all to the diligence of their minds, bodies, and their own free will. And they've chosen the way of deceit while despising the truth that I've taught all men in the holy law, which we gave unto Moses, said the Lord. Such lost souls have therefore rejected the law of love, which I've written on their hearts as a strange as it is the one, as strange as it is, the ones inspired by my grace stands despised. So love from love, people. And know that the Lord says, my teachings and blessings have been rejected. And most people sh shall listen to the teachings of devils and doomed people shall foolishly accept their trickiest deceit. And right here, I got to tell you, I'm being totally ignored and I'm preaching the gospel of the Revelation 14. So please share these videos. Um, it will help save this world, tell you what, according to the scriptures. Love you, love you.